with each expendables we make, there's always the question, what do we do next? How do we improve this? With Expendables 4, at the heart and soul of it is our director, Scott. He was a stunt guy beforehand, and you know now he's a, a, a fantastic director. And he's a guy who knows exactly what he wants from this. I tried to bring men and women in from around the world on this movie. I had a team from Jackie Chan's Hong Kong fight team. I brought Steve Kelso in from the Fast and Furious franchise on car sequences. And I brought in Brian Smurz from all the X-Men to direct second unit. We were bringing our knowledge of stunt work that we've been doing for our whole lives. And I thought between the four of us, we can all bring something new and exciting to the franchise to really elevate where it's gonna go. Can't wait till we start blowing up shit. Our philosophy is the Expendables would never look right in terms of it being an all CGI film. Even though it's more difficult, we took the time to actually shoot real action, which makes it very visceral. I knew one of my most important hires was going to be a second unit director. On a big film like this, first unit is where the actors are, the dialogue and the story, and some of the action is shot. But then second unit really picks up for me where Brian takes on and shoots a lot of the heavy lift of the action with the stunt doubles. And Brian Smurz came to play. Boom, 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 boom. And then you're like, you're flying. I mean, it's gotta be it's a lot of chaos. Okay. People running. There's really two major locations in, in the movie. One is Libya, which is a huge action sequence with cars and tanks and all kinds of wild stunts. Happy hunting. This is a scene that's very important. We get to see some of our new characters, like Easy and Galan, in action. We're in the weapons plant right now, and we're going after the bad guy's nuclear detonators. If they have that, everything's going to go tits up. But luckily, the Expendables are on the case. There's a lot going on in this scene that, in many ways, sets the tone for the entire movie. We're starting to come for a vehicle than a lot of ops. Less by less of the stuff that excites me personally is really some of the, the stuff that we're seeing with the vehicles. And they're doing stuff that no one else on the planet can do. We're gonna be doing some donuts, some endos, a bit of jumping, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. The action is uh, mainly drifting around uh, these corners. You can see that there's debris and the surfaces are not great. There's a lot of obstacles in the way while well, we're doing these high speed chase sequences. And it is at high speed, we're doing like 50. It's about putting your faith and your confidence with the team that we have, being the stunt coordinator and the drivers. They've got a great wide range of experience. One that was really fun is when Gunner shoots the tank and explodes one of the bad guys' trucks and it flips over the top of them as 50 Cent drives underneath it. And that was one that really took some choreography. It was really exciting when things blow up, boom, and, and smoke and stare, and there's fire, and I come out of the other side. I'm not sure I'm ever gonna get a chance to do that in life. But uh, there it is on the screen. Now that's what I'm talking about, God. Brian's one that shot that particular sequence, and they did really such a great job of tying all the elements. Three, two, one, bang! Got it? And go! Go, go, thank you! Open oh, fire! In the script, it was going to be these really cool vehicles where they stop and then they get on this foot chase and they fight the bad guys. And I came on board, I said, why should they stop? This should be a car chase fight that never stops. So that the fights happen while they're chasing each other, transferring from vehicles and jumping back to these cars and it all keeps moving. We're inside, Gummy. When they got inside the warehouse, that's where some of the fun really began. Time to improvise! I can improvise. The character Christmas had to jump across from the A1 onto the truck and run across the top of it, and all of that happening on the move. When you're working with the actors on the physical stunt work, 
whether it's fights, car work, whatever. We always rehearse with the stunt doubles. Then we integrate the actors into that so that they can see exactly what the choreography is, exactly where they need to be, because we need to make sure that it's done safely. We can wear out the stunt guy, but we can't wear out the lead guy. Some of my actors, like Jason, go over there and shoot some of the bigger action components. Jason's in the trenches every day, but his energy's always up, and he's so inquisitive, and he wants to know everything what's going on in the set. When you have actors like Jason Statham that can really do some pretty incredible stuff, it's always fun for us as stunt filmmakers to do things maybe that we can't do with other actors. So that sequence where Jason fights in the back of the moving truck was always super special. <laughs> and gets into a little bit of a fight as well. We set up a rig on the side of uh, the A1 Polaris uh, with an arm strut coming up and over the top. So when one of the uh, mercenaries jumps onto my vehicle, he starts raining down punches and then exchange some blows, I managed to grab hold of him with an assist from the riggers and just basically use him as a rag doll, pelting him from side to side and then chucking him off the end of the vehicle. What the fuck, Easy? <laughs> Only Easy Day was yesterday. Yep. At the end, when they come outside, I wanted that element of surprise when 50 Cent and uh, Randy Couture come out in their A1 and they get sideswiped by a technical truck and it makes the A1 flip upside down and land. I'm out of ammo, coming in. That actually took teamwork between first unit and second unit, where Brian Smurfs shot all the action on that, and I shot all the actor moments, and we had to tie them together. The Libya set piece is always on the move, and I always find that really challenging for me because everything keeps rolling, and there's four different stories going at the same time and one's in the air and two are on the ground and one's outside and they're all trying to intersect. What's going on in there? I need a status report now. One more and we're on Vermont. To really try to tie all of that together in one massive sequence uh, was super fun and I think will be an extremely entertaining for the audience. Scott likes to experiment. He's spontaneous and is willing to like try new things on the go and in the moment. Scott wants to hear your opinions and fashion things the, the way uh, that feels comfortable for both of us. He has a way with the actors. They know that he is going to make them look good. And that trust, that knowledge changes the whole dynamic of a movie. Scott Wall, as a director, will bring his own unique kind of detailed military perspective to this film. It'll seem much more real. I've been blessed enough to have done commercials for three of the four military branches in the United States. And after working on the film Act of Valor, I do have deep admiration and respect for the men and women that served our country. And it's given me a different lens on maintaining authenticity within the landscape of military type work. So I really tried to bring that to the table with the action, considering most of the characters in the Expendables all have some type of military background. So that manifests itself into how they say things, how they move, the type of gear they have, all of that. And we need to make sure that each one of those things is portrayed accurately, whether the character is a ranger, whether he was SAS, whether he was a Navy SEAL. We want to bring those types of integrity to each character. Cut. Cut it. All right, moving on. Very nice. OK, let's go. The Thai cargo ship Dintara was hijacked in the Adamant Sea by our mutual friend, Ramat. The ship itself is gonna be hosting an exchange where they'll be taking possession of the remaining nuclear materials needed to construct a viable bomb, nuclear type, and we cannot let that happen, understood? The other major location of this movie is the boat itself, the Jintara. It's a 112 meter set, this enormous aircraft carrier, a four-story bridge in the middle of it. We ended up building the Jintara deck out on a chicken farm in Greece on land and put the water in and post. We needed a lot of room because obviously the ship deck is extremely big and long. 
the ship deck was something that was important because we needed scale, we needed speed. And so having drone work and having camera car work, being able to be on the side of the ship to help sell all that was only possible by us shooting it on land. And that just allowed us to move the camera in even more visceral ways. I knew the tool bag that I needed of cameras to try to immerse the audience in the film, being the drone, steady cam, camera car work, you know, cranes. And so when we would see what the action sequence was gonna be between myself and Brian, we knew how to wrap the cameras around them and have, you know, between five and 10 cameras all the time to try to put the audience in the boots of the Expendables. I think the Jintara sequence, once we arrive on the ship, the pace doesn't drop. It's just go, go, go. We're preparing some of the big, uh, very dangerous, but uh, controlled explosions. My role primarily is to look after all the action sequences that involve big fireballs, uh, big debris blasts, and of course, close proximity explosions next to our stunt team and to our main cast. We had a lot of explosions that we needed to do on the ship. And I kept telling my special effects guy, more fuel, dude, more fuel. And they kept asking me, how big do you want it? I said, never big enough. You say to yourself, well, how much action can you do on a ship? Well, we've got motorcycles. The character Christmas has an affinity for street bikes and motorcycles, so I wanted to use Jason's personal background in riding and put it in the movie, and we came up with this action sequence with motorcycles on the ship. I wanted to do something really unique that was fun in the movie and design this jump. I needed to have some X game athlete that could pull this off because I did not want to do it in CG. I'd worked with Robbie Madison in the past and so had Steve Kelso. I have the world record for the motorcycle longest jump ramp to ramp. Even to watch it, you can't believe a human being did that and lived. We'll have more safety precautions because it's a movie, but these are big stunts. I'm doubling Jason Statham. The man is badass, so I'm just giving it all I can to kind of make his character be as he is a total weapon. the 360SX, amazing motorcycle, but to do a jump like this, we've put more air pressure in the front, we've compressed the spring a little bit, make it a little bit stiffer, and we've slowed down the rebound and, uh, and tightened up the compression. The scene here, there's one bad guy left, so I'm coming towards him. I'm jumping off a ramp. What we have set up here behind me is a freestyle motocross setup. We're gonna do a whip jump here. A lot of snag points. The ramp just barely fit into the position on the aircraft carrier that we had. We have like the metal railing, there's pipes, so it's a tricky jump. We've been working for about four days now to you know build the scene up and, and get all the pieces. It's probably the most riskiest stunt for me of, of the set, and here we go. Two, one, action! Robbie did the jump probably for us five or six times. And uh, the last one, I did come up to Robbie and I said, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you flick it a little bit more? That means whip it out, try to get inverted. He almost bit the dust because he did flick it out so far that he had to try to over rotate to bring it back. And it, it was awesome. It was the one that's in the movie. The bike went really upside down and it was perfect. I think we got a great action shot and it should make for a good part of the film. We're upside down, mate. familiarity of the franchise, you have the familiarity of the action, and then you have these moments in it that are unfamiliar that take you 
over and above what you've ever seen before, and you go, whoa, oh, holy cow. Oh, this is gonna be fun. I feel at home in these tentpole action movies. It's fun and chaotic, and they have like a special element to them, which I really enjoy. <clears throat> we really need to be more careful. Mm, make me. It's really important for us to push that envelope of fun. We're always trying to make sure that the audience leaves satisfied and entertained and have a blast doing it. You almost fucking killed me! You're welcome! The Expendables is about action heroes. Everyone loves an action hero. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Expendables isn't just a drama or a thriller or a straight action. It takes all of these elements, puts them together with a great bunch of actors that the audience wants to spend two hours with. Can you make us something loud and messy? Does the Pope shit in the woods? No, the Pope don't shit in the woods. Or next to a bit. Why you gotta say shit like that? They're not perfect, they're not superheroes. Within those action scenes, there are a lot of those human moments. What's that thing on your head? Well, I was chatting with this girl on the internet and she likes her 70s look, you know, the fair faucet thing. Sounds special. It does. It was Expendables 4. We're going in a new direction, but still maintaining the integrity of the old. The familiarity of the franchise is there, but to watch these characters grow and change gives it a chance to really take off into a whole new level that this franchise hasn't seen yet. Is my delivery a little different than Barney's? He probably would have just said, let's go. Well, let's go. Once I called me back in 2009 and he sent me the script. Hey, Dolph, I got a script, check it out. See what you think. So. I started reading the script, and it was like a love of good old-fashioned action movies. It's a very entertaining, and in this case, very violent world that didn't really exist in 2009, 2010. Everything was going visual effects, and there were no real, you know, big guys kicking butt anymore. There was no real fights or very few, like, shootouts. It was cast very clever by Stallone because he had people to work from that era a little bit over the hill, and it struck a nerve. The first Expendables, I looked at it, I knew it was gonna work. Like, everyone that I watched in the action film was in this film. If you like action films, you like the Expendables. There's a tremendous amount of affection for these guys, and we all knew that this had the potential for longevity. It's like the Rolling Stones. People still flock to go see them. What's the formula behind it? It's the camaraderie. It's that sense of familiarity. What makes these so fun is that while these actors are all playing characters, there's so much of Sly in that Barney Ross character, and I think there's so much of Jason in Lee Christmas, and, and all of them, really. Is, is that the sniper? Is it the sniper? Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I got a prescription scope. Don't worry about it. And then right here, use this and lose it. Let's go. Well, Hawkeye. Yeah, perfect. Let's go straight to it. There's so much sly in, in this franchise. He helped write it. He helped develop it. He helped get it made. He directed the first movie. The first time I saw him walk onto set, he's got so much presence, smoking his cigar. I'm just like, you look like a real life superhero. And watching him come up with the one liners is a sight to behold. He's so clever and knows exactly what the scene needs. I got a prescription pill. Okay, well, listen up, Shaggy. Okay, so Shaggy's the key. It's always fun because he always brings something uh, new and crazy and, and, and unpredictable to the table. Sly's been a crazy custodian for this franchise. He was pivotal and said, you know what? I gotta put Jason Moore on the forefront. You're welcome! Jason's the one that's going out and kicking most of the ass now, which is a natural progression. He's such an action icon in his own right. So to let him guide the ship, I think it made a very obvious sense for Jason to be that guy. Maybe you want to die a bit, old son. Not me. I want to be cheerful, happy. But I will come visit you in the home. Promise? Scout's on it. Jason has this ability to 
bring himself to these roles and bring the intensity and still maintain vulnerability. That's why Jason's so likable. He has subtleties in his performance that makes you believe it no matter what he's doing. You can bring him on there. Bring all the fucking men you want. I'll work to every last one of them. When I get to you, I'll make sure that the only way you leave the ship is in a wonderful variety of pieces. I think the most exciting thing about this is watching Jason Statham's character really come into his own. What happens when it's Jason's team? How does he fail? How does he succeed? What does that look like? What does it mean? And I, I think that's a nice pivot for the uh, for the franchise. Those detonators get in the hands of Ocelot. He's planning on using them to create an international incident. We can't let that happen. So that's when you guys come in. On this one, definitely we wanted to go back to the original film the one that Sly directed and ground the characters again and make you feel and care for them and really go on the journey with these characters through these crazy scenarios. We have found a way with each of the original Expendables to give them a little different wrinkle so it's not the same exact carbon copy from any of the other films. It is Gunner and it is Toll Road and it is Barney and, and Christmas. But they each now have their own new issues in life. My eyes deceiving me. What? It's that thing on Gunner's head. It looks like a sick cat. Cats are cute. That looks like tumbleweed. I'm returning as Gunnar Jensen, who's this crazy Scandinavian um, mercenary who uh, has been in all of these films. He's a bit of a comedic relief because he has his idiosyncrasies in, in number four. He's obviously got some kind of baggage with him. He always has problems, a little bit of substance abuse, a little bit of concentration issues. And, and in this film, he's been sober for six months. Liked him better when he was a drunk. Yeah, really Age has caught up with him, so he's wearing glasses. Things don't work out that well initially for him. <laughs> Gotta go way off target. What do you need, a CNI dog? Damn it. Hey, Stevie Wonder, you might want to get that prescription checked. I wanted to make sure every single character had their own cool arc of conflict that they were trying to overcome and probably something that the audience member can relate to. So the audience can follow the arc of the character and, and catch the payoffs and all of these obstacles that he has, you know, to accomplish his goal. So those things put together is kind of fun to play with as an actor. Good to be back. Of course, the Expendables always get the shit details, the stuff that nobody else wants to do. We've uh, just gotten off the Antonov, offloaded our ATVs, our tactical vehicles. Obviously, this one's got a 50 cal mounted on top of it. And we are going to dispatch some bad guys and run down some nuclear detonators before they get into the wrong hands. I'm playing Toll Road, one of the old original uh, Expendables with the very first script. I got to sit out with Sly Stallone and talk about this character. He wanted him quoting Nietzsche, a college-educated guy that became a soldier, became a mercenary, talked about his cauliflower ear and all this stuff that was, you know, very personal to me. What the fuck happened to the AM, huh? I'm glad you asked me that. I wrestled in college. Common affliction in that sport is contusions to the year. I feel like Toll Road has kind of had to find his place, you know, especially in an ensemble cast like this. Getting your moments to shine and do your thing is, is very important. And I think Toll Road gets his share of those moments in Expendables 4. It's almost say Ocelot's a ghost that Barney created to cover his own ass for a mistake. No fucking way. Ocelot exists. Barney will bury him someday. We finally get to see Toll Road put his expertise to use. He finally gets to blow some stuff up. Fire in the hole, fellas! We've done four of these, and uh, all the guys in the movie are kind of similar in some ways. We we like sports, we like action, we, um, we have similar tastes. So for me to come back and work with Jason, work with Sly, and see Randy again, it's really a blast, for sure. It's like old home week, getting the band back together, so to speak, it's, it's always fun. I'm a little starstruck with Randy because I've watched MMA for so long and he's a legend. Sorry. They all have very unique personalities, like Dolph is very polite and like a gentleman and Stallone is very swaggy and like funny and then Statham is very like, 
focused and goal-oriented, and they all have really good chemistry together. I think what the fans of Expendables can expect is, number one, to see all the guys they love up on screen there. But number two, the audience loves when old school meets new school. This is a clash of both worlds, and so there's something in there for everybody. The fun thing about Expendables is that you have these iconic 80s, 90s, 2000s action movie stars who are still clanging and banging with the best of them to this day. But you also have a new generation passing through, so you've got a fun situation where you're honoring the old but inviting the new. On this one, we had what I call the new band of misfits. Randy's a veteran. He did this movie four times. <laughs> four fucking times. I'm a new Jack. I play Easy Day in Expendables 4 when he comes in for the first time. It's a really iconic scene for Easy Day. It just sets the tone. Hey, is this a new guy? Hey, it's Easy Day. Good man, ex Special Forces. Hey, Barney. Hey, Easy. It's interesting because I have a relationship with Barney, but I don't know these guys. You know, I've just done some work with him before, and you come in and you really don't know who's really efficient, and so you're looking like, who the fuck are these people they got going with us, man? And it kind of gets off to a really rough start with Gunner. This, I was like, don't worry about it. I got a prescription scope. What? Oh, guys, remember this face. Don't shoot it by accident. 50 really fits in. Big guy, big and strong. It's just exciting to be a part of it. Hey, do you read now? What is this? Going somewhere, are we? We're going after the guy that got Barney. My character, Gina, I think she's clever. That's probably her strong suit. She is also a trained mercenary. <laughs> Gina is an ex of Lee Christmases. And then she comes back into the fold and plays a role in The Expendables. Megan Fox's character becomes a threat to the relationship between Sly and Jason. What are you going to tell me? Hey, you stop playing footsie with your girlfriend. Sly just wants to hang out with his best friend. And it becomes this funny love triangle between the three of them. And it, I think it really adds a fun conflict between a bromance and a romance. She gives the boys a lot of shit. <laughs> I've got your skills and then some, and neither of you like it because you're both cavemen. She's Tony, you. We've had some really interesting scenes between Jason and I, the scene where we end up getting close. Oh, I always liked this tattoo. So did your brother. <laughs> You catch any of that? I don't know what she's saying. But why do you think they call a lash? I have no idea, but I'd love to find out. We've introduced Lavie Tran, up and coming young actress. It was a wonderful addition to this franchise. I play Lash, who is a new member of The Expendables, and she brings in a skill set that we haven't seen before, and I'm excited to showcase it. Yeah! <laughs> She's smart and she's quick. I think the audience can relate to Lash because she brings a little bit of sass, a little bit of edge, and a new vibe to the film. Oh, it's way bigger than that, darling. No, no, it doesn't. Chinese bird. We use the middle finger, they use the pinky. Oh, but if the shoe fits. Growing up, my dad and I would watch all these action films with, you know, Stallone and Dolph, and then being alongside with the people who have been on the big screen, it's a dream come true. I'm so stoked. Tony Jaw plays Daisha, and he's this character that Barney Ross had worked with long ago, and I always told Jason's character, if you ever get in trouble, this is the guy to seek. I'm looking for a man named Daisha. I'm sorry, Daisha is long gone. Oh, yeah, where? To a place of peace. When I met Scott, he said, Tony, I want to explain your character. I was a Buddhist monk for a time, maybe three months. 
So this why this is your character. You like to be peace and calm. He's a guy that's tried to leave this crazy, expendable style life, and he's total in the Zen mode of life. And then Jason's trying to drag him back. I'm taking this boat with or without your permission. <laughs> Why do you have Barney's ring? Barney's dead. The beauty of it is his old lifestyle and his old character, the wolf, emerges, and it's Tony Jaw at another level. Deja is a warrior. He knows everything how to kill, and he's like a tiger. When he fights, he fights angry, power, energy. <laughs> I am Galan. That's supposed to mean some? <laughs> Galan is one of the new members of the Expendables. He's the son of Gal Gal. And in a lot of ways, he's his father's son. I think a lot of his, um, his emotions come from his loins and his heart rather than his brain. I have the eyesight, the heart, and the sex drive of my father. Only he doesn't talk as much as his father. He's worse. No. Twice as bad. There's a scene when they're on their way to a big battle sequence, and Galan is regaling the other Expendables who aren't necessarily listening in his sexual conquests. You know what he's a golden child? He's rich. The woman, she, she, she squats down on top of you and releases her bladder. It's very liberating. Wow, a world-class pervert. He can never remember whether he was tied up in a sexual way or tied up because he was being tortured. His wires get crossed a little bit. Why is everybody looking at me like this? Do you want to know where I'm from? Where? I come from a small town in Bogota, okay? <laughs> <laughs> in an action movie like these, the comic relief becomes very important. It's like a pressure relief valve for all the crazy stuff that happens, those little quirky moments makes it fun and what people really like. I will avenge him. Because he does like cold showers. Galan's young, he's fresh, and he wants to go, go, go from the very beginning. Get in, losers, we're going shopping. You might want to watch your sick. He wears his heart on his sleeve, and he's not afraid to say what's on his mind, which I'm sure the other Expendables wish he wouldn't do. He's a bit of a divisive character in the Expendables group, so he's got a thing or two to learn from the old bulls. I do not speak, I cannot speak, because my mind is full of these brutal, visceral fantasies, fantasies that will now become a hellish reality. <sighs> you should go back to not talking. The heart and soul of Expendables really is what fellow men and women will do for each other in the foxhole and really risk their lives for the sake of your fellow brother or sister next to you. Don't worry, my friend. I would never leave you behind. I think what's most interesting is to go on this journey to save the day. It looks like we failed miserably and, and are falling apart, and at the end of the day, we come together. We draw on each other, we have each other's back, and we get the job done. What about that corny quote on the ship, Christmas? You don't need to repeat that, Toll Road. Make my sacrifice now! Yeah, fuck you. The heart and soul of Expendables 4 is the bond between the characters and behind the scenes between the actors. And even when a new Expendable comes on, there is this real heartfelt emotion between all of them. That's the chemistry that, you know, Sly really came up with on the first Expendables. And I think 4 really passes the torch and lets us run with it. Salute to my friends who never quit. Cheers, you all. Salute. 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 What's up, guys? You know we're out here shooting the Expendables 4. What the fuck you think we're doing? We're blowing shit up. Action sequences are bigger and better than anything you've ever seen in the previous three films. It's pure entertainment, high adrenaline, great stunts. Expendables is a movie with amazing action sequences and actors who can really pull that off. We wanted to raise the bar and really have some new exciting stuff that you haven't seen. 
every time I get one of these expendable scripts and I read through it, I'm like, how in the hell are we gonna pull it off? No, 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 no